most recent Table Turf Crew Showdown. So we got some players with a bit of experience here playing up against each other. The first map will be River Drift, a map we didn't get to see last time. Both players picking their decks quite quickly, I will note. Seems that they already know what they're going with. A bit of a... not the greatest opening hand for Jay Deco. Going to redraw it. Hopefully getting... <laughs> that is almost exactly the same hand. Just taking it taking it in stride. She'll play Octo Troop Octo Ling down to start off. River Drift is a map where you really want to get to the center very fast because there are several seven wide cards that can block off the entire map. Very different cards as we see in the opening here. Pearl, the largest card in the game, being played as compared to Octo Ling. J. Deco does get Tri Stringer, which will be able to push to the middle of the map. It may not be able to block off the map in the way that she wants it, however, just being able to have a presence in the center of the map is crucial here. Especially when your opponent plays an opening card as large as Pearl. So we're going to have to see how Sabi follows up with that Pearl. Placement. Splatter color screen is interesting here. It does sneak by the tri stringer. It loses the clash, but it's really not that bad of a situation for Savvy. Jay Deco, on the other hand, is not exactly in the best position here. Not too many follow ups. The slosher is a very nice play to push aggressively. However, seeing the, t the turf points on your side of the map can be a bit frightening at times. Want to play a bit defensive, maybe build up some special points, especially with that slosher. Both players playing the slosher, in fact. And we're going to see now a scallop play comboing very nicely with that Octoling. We'll activate a second special point for J Deco. We're going to have to see how Savvy decides to follow up because there is less and less space to be able to make a play. However, the Zinc Mini Splatling, perfect card for this scenario, activating its special point, winning a slight clash with the Scallop, and just further infiltrating the base of J Deco. J Deco now looking, trying to make sense of her options. We see a similar deck, if not the same deck, as to what we saw in the Table Turf for Palestinian Kids event. We see the Maz and Scrapper, we see the Splash Wall, and we have Jay Deco going to get a third special point here. And I'm going to bring it up because it was something that we saw in the past event. Something Jay Deco excels in doing is that she will generate a lot of special early, and if she gets blocked off, will use those special points with the special attack early, most likely Tenta Missiles, to special attack into her opponent's face, and we are going to see that right now. Being able to play Tenta Missiles right now would be a very, very nice play. It would skyrocket her back into the game, push her to her opponent's base of Savvy. And so we're going to have to see how she decides to play it. Does she want more turf? Does she want a slightly better position? Looking at her cards to see what her options are on follow-up. Savvy's already locked in her decision. And we're going to see the Tenta Missiles being played so that there's a spot diagonally. Unfortunately, the Little Judd will block that off, and that special point will almost go to waste now as a result. It does activate the special point of a Tri Stringer, so it's not completely uh, moot. However, Jadeka will now have to follow up, setting up for the Tony Kenza the next turn. This will be a very, very nice Tony Kenza card, being able to generate three special points with it. Being played, very nice combo, very nice setup. Leaving space for Octo Stamp on the side. J Deco's by no means out of it, even with that Tenta Missiles falling a bit flat. She still has several options, has more turf, uh, more special points than her opponent, I should say. Turf down by 7, it's not that big of a deal, especially when the special points at the end will really decide the game here. The Trying to figure out 
the best spot to play, we're going to be getting some more turf points for J Deco. Savvy taking a nice special point and now a lead with both turf and special as we go into the final three turns. Both players with four special points. And Savvy with a th with a six point lead. Octave Stamp going to be played as both players generate even more special points. Six special points with Savvy as opposed to five with J Deco. To go into the final turns, Hype Midstorm Big Man would be an interesting play it, as it wouldn't allow any follow up special on the final turn. And so we're likely going to see the, there it is, the Gluga Duelies being played to generate points and then one final special attack on the last turn. However, Savvy already has a bit of a lead. And we'll be able to play a second special attack. The Nozzle Nose was just a bit of an intermediate special, being able to take a bit of space. As we see that the Big Man doesn't have the greatest special attack opportunity. The own Tenta Missiles kind of getting in the way of any attack. Since the Tenta Missiles doesn't have a special point to follow up, it's kind of a dead end in trying to figure out a way to play specials. Unfortunately, Savvy does not have a 312. We're going to see only an Octo Stamp being played as Hype Manta Storm takes up a quite a bit of space. As we have a draw for the first map of this set. The draw means that we are in fact going to replay River Drift as, as if this game never happened. Score is still 0-0. Zero to zero. And we will go to River Drift one more time. Hopefully not resulting in a draw this time. And hopefully resulting in a better opening hand for J Deco. As we run it back, back to River Drift for game one, attempt number two. A much better starting hand for J Deco here. Options a lot better than simply Octoling. We're going to see Maz first up. As it's played there, it will be able to activate Scrapper off of it. It's very defensive play. As we see the same Pearl opening come out from Savvy. J Deco is going to need some way to push up. As we know last time, Savvy likes to take a lot of space with that. Splatter color screen. There are other cards to be played. Tony Kenza leaves quite a bit of the map open, especially to the right. We're going to have to see how that'll play out, how Savvy plays the second turn, if she'll be able to take advantage. Instead, playing a bit passively, not really aggressive on the right side. And now J Deco is going to have to figure out what card to play. The Reflux Deco there means that Scrapper will not be playable. This is a setup for Tri Stringer, however, ruining the Scrapper combo at the same time, I'm not too sure how I feel about it. I maybe would have preferred to see it be played one down, leaving the Scrapper combo intact, but with two special attacks in hand already, this is not looking the greatest for J Deco. Savvy playing a bit passively as J Deco does in fact get the Tri Stringer. Unfortunately, it's not inclined Tri Stringer. It will have an open spot at the bottom of the map where it will not activate its special point. Though J Deco does have Fizzy Bomb and can rectify it and get both specials from the Fizzy Bomb and the Tri Stringer, I find it interesting that neither player has decided to take that large open space to the right of the map. And it doesn't look like J Deco is that interested in taking it either. Instead of pivoting to take with the Slosher, you want to get some special points near your opponent's turf. You can only launch special attacks from your special points. So if all of your special points are tucked away in your own base, you'll have no opportunity to attack. So pushing up a bit with the Slosher is nice. And in fact, the Clash is very beneficial for J Deco here getting a special point right up in the base. A second one from Octostamp furthers a special attack, or special defense, I would say, having special points placed around your side of the base. Your opponent can't play over them. However, 
since it is splatter color screen and these are in a checkerboard pattern, I don't think it's going to matter all that much. However, more special points, always a good thing. Especially when you're down by quite a few points. As we see Savvy using Tenetech, potentially setting up here, you have a lot of special blocks and not really a way to activate them minus something like a suction bomb or a fizzy bomb or octopod so we're gonna have to see if those two special blocks next to each other will ever be activated jdeco following up with the maz with a gluga dualies it fits pretty nicely won't activate any special blocks due to that maz having one diagonal space that just isn't filled in as we have Octoling, which can fit in very nicely. It may not activate special blocks, however, it is just solid turf. It's worth 11 points, and since it's almost even now, just taking that might be a good thing. However, Jideko going to go for potentially Tenta missiles. However, there's not much benefit to doing it now, and she seems and she seems to see that, and instead decides to just go back play Octoling as. Savvy plays Little Judd, a very nice card, being played at the corner, generating a special point. There's the Fizzy Bomb that was talked about earlier. Instead, placing it lightly next to the Maz, being able to generate the special from the Maz, and hopefully being able to draw the Splash Ball to activate those two special points. However, no such card comes up, and instead, J Deco is going to have to pass on this turn. As Savvy takes her time, both players with four special points only get two turf point difference. But having to pass here for Jdeco could be disastrous if Savvy does have a play. With only two turns left, the Octo Stamp will activate another special point, giving a six point lead. There is the splash wall that Jdeco was looking for, however, it's a bit too late for that. And instead, it's going to have to special attack. For these next two turns, unfortunately not able to find a great spot that would activate both special blocks or a special block to allow for a follow-up special attack on the final turn. Instead, looks to play big man, not able to find any spot, and instead may have to settle for just Tenta missiles this turn. The only problem is where will the Booyah Bomb be placed? There aren't the greatest number of spots as the Clash in the center of the board, and Savvy now only has two special points left. And Jdeco, seeing that Booyah Bomb isn't the greatest play, will be playing Scrapper instead. That's a nine point lead. Is it enough? Looking back with Booyah Bomb, it's not the greatest option. So instead, going back to the Scrapper, trying to figure out the best way to play it, the way to get the most points, and Sync Mini Splatling is only 7 points, and with 9 points lead gained on that, J Deco will take the first set, 86 to 84. That was a very nice comeback, almost, from Jdeco with how that opening started. Both players leaving a bit of space open for quite a bit on the right side of the map, and that may have been what caused uh, Savvy's loss in this, just not taking advantage of that space. And when you did, you lost the clash. Something like that can be detrimental, especially going into the late stages of the game, not having the great spot to special attack, and that special weapon clash on the second to last turn could have all played a factor in that loss as the players go through and decide it would be up to Savvy as we await Savvy's counter pick
as they both decide to sit down immediately. Going to Main Street. This map is often toted as being similar to River Drift, though there is a notable difference that River Drift is only 7 wide as opposed to Main Street being 9 wide, so you cannot block off the entirety of Main Street in a single turn. You'd always have to have two cards to do it, and so your opponent can push through and potentially break through. The starting blocks are deceptively close to each other. We see Hype Manta Storm Big Man from J Deco. That is a very nice starting play on a map like this where you want to reach far into the center. Looking at the opening hand, this is the same deck. I assume J Deco only has this single deck. It's sort of a general deck, has several nice combos in it, has, as we've seen before, Tony Kenza and Splashwall. Octoling is being used as a versatile card. And of course, Moz and Scrapper, Moz and Glugadoolies. There are several combos that can be pulled off here. We see the Kali being played from Savvy. I'm going to assume that this is a similar, if not the same deck as to what was played in the River Drift, as we saw Kali played there both times. The second turn of Main Street, kind of a dilemma. Do you want to play aggressively? Do you want to play passively? We're going to be a, see a bit of a passive play as Savvy goes for the Slosher combo and generates two special points right off the bat. We're going to see Jay Deco try to take advantage of that play defensive here and block off that side of the map. Though it does leave a bit open if, say, a Splat Charger was played, even if an E-Leader was played, it would be able to break through with either the Special Point or the base of the E-Leader. So if Savvy does decide to play aggressive here, that Tri-Stringer will not be able to block all of it. We'll have to see how Savvy plays in response to a bit more aggressive play from J Deco. Clock ticks down to 10 seconds left as Little Judd is played in the back of the base, and I think we're going to see J Deco take an even more aggressive approach here. Slosher could be played, instead being played off to the side. Slosher could have been played with Hype Manta Storm Big Man. It does combo to activate both special points of both the Slosher and Hype Manta Storm Big Man. And once again, we see actually J Deco ends up with both special attacks in her hand very early on. It's turn nine. Two small cards, two special cards is not really what you want to see. However, the board position right now is very, very favorable to J Deco, even though she doesn't have any special points. You see the Maws being drawn here. Very nice spot. It will allow Scrapper to be played later on, as Savvy generates three special points. However, no real place to use them. We see the Octoling and Scallop combo, once again, generating two points for J Deco on this turn. Savvy doesn't really have too many places to play. A lot of the base is now a two wide and not too many cards can take up a lot of space and fit in there. Only cards like Steel Eel, E-Leader, Zinc Mini Splatling being one of those. However, still no great special placement. We see J Deco now draw Tony Kenza. We have the Tony Kenza and Splash Wall combo. Tried and true. The question is, where is it going to be played? I don't think it matters too much so long as the Tony Kenza is played against a wall and is able to activate its special point. So really anywhere on the bottom row, as long as it's attached, will be fine there. Making do very nicely J Deco is with the hand that she's been given. Having both those special special attacks sitting in your hand can be tantalizing at times. It's just, you're, they're stuck there. You don't, don't want to play them until the final turn. There's not much you can do with it. And instead, getting very nice draws. The do stamp being played very nice. That is a very good special attacking spot played right up against the enemy's turf. 
And now Savvy playing the suction bomb, getting one more special point. That as J Deco finishes the mod grapper combo. One of the old, I, I, I almost call it old fashioned. It's one of the first combos I think the community really discovered, but it's always been a good one. It's a four by six combo area. There's several ways to activate mods. You have Octo Stamp, you have Scrapper, you have Inkjet even. And there are just so many good ways to use it. This is a classic combo and it's worth so much with a 21 point lead already from J Deco. And this just looks to increase that lead even more. Not to mention that she still has the Tony Kenza special. So looking at these next two turns, she'll be jumping up to potentially seven special points. Savvy having to pass now with a now 31 point lead. J Deco looking at that splash wall, putting it into Tony Kenza. We know exactly what this is doing. Going to generate seven special points for these final two turns, more than enough to play both special attacks. The L3 Nozzle Nose. Fitting in very nicely. Eight special points from Savvy. Unfortunately, there's not too many ways to use them. And since Savvy passed with Pearl, Savvy's actually unable to use Pearl now for a special attack. Pearl does cost six special points, however, using the six special points points from Pearl, and then activating Pearl's special point on the special attack to use it, would have given Savvy a third special point and more than enough to activate a 312. J Deco looking to see the best place will have a perfect, near perfect I should say, inkjet spot. Savvy now with 9 special points in one turn, not really able to do much with it. The Octo Stamp doesn't really do much, it would have likely been better as a special attack. J Deco now instead just looking for any place to play Booyah Bomb. It's kind of an awkward card to use because it is just one giant blob. And so we're just going to see it be played normally, not taking too much time. J Deco knows that she has the lead, there's not too much to be worried about, just play it. And take the set 2 and 0. Oh. This is a best of 5, so Savvy does still have a chance to come back, potentially reverse sweep it. She does get the counter pick for the next map again. So it's going to be an uphill battle coming back from being down 0 and 2. This is a bit of an unusual stage. Um, it's, it's a plus shape. And something unusual about it, it's 7 wide, which leads to a lot of early block up in the both, I guess, in front of your base and to the side of the plus. Although, with J Deco not having any sort of 7 wide cards, you won't really see that happen. So, instead, J Deco is just going to have to go push to the center, not really have a way to block off. Going to start off with Scrapper, hoping to potentially get the Maz combo. As we see a very aggressive Cali coming from Savvy. J Deco moving to sort of gain some space on the right side of the map. Leaving that left side open. If the Maz combo does get interrupted, it wouldn't be the greatest as those are that'd be two special points that aren't available anymore. However, Savvy instead taking a more defensive approach playing Little Judd back behind a bit preemptive and now J Deco is going to take the left side with that Hype Myth Storm Big Man. If it gets played onto an interrupted, it would effectively block off the Maz, securing that spot for later. And we're now going to see Tony Kenza being played. No splash wall for J Deco at the moment. However, there's still plenty of time to draw it. And once again, drawing 
Having that 10 missiles early on, having small cards early on, not the greatest. However, as with before, the board state is looking very nice for J Deco. A lot of space, not too many chances for your opponent to interfere. Hopefully trying to set up a reflux deco. There's not really a way to play it for tri-stringer combo on this map. It, especially with the starting block, there's just not enough space for you to activate both or to place both a reflux and a tri-stringer in the same spot. So we're going to have to just settle for playing them as normal cards. Maybe could have been played to the right side of the map, however, that leaves it vulnerable to being interrupted. However, Savvy not really taking that much space, instead playing all in her own base, allowing Jdeco to just take as much space as she wants. And that may prove to be, and there is a very aggressive splatter color screen, pushing in far to the right side. Although it comes a bit late, there's not really much that can be done on that side of the map already. It's already mostly taken over. Tri-Stringer is a play. It can be played on, I assume, is both the left and right sides of the plus. If I'm mistaken, not on the right side. It can be played at the bottom of the map. I can see that. And it does have a spot on the left side of the map. But... Instead, going to play the Octo Stamp, just getting more special points. Maz finally drawn, able to pull off that long awaited combo. That'll bring J Deco up to a 4 special point total after this. Savvy does have 4 special points down by 12, and I assume that lead is going to get even larger after this turn concludes with the Maz placement. Maz itself is 12 points, and I don't see any way for Savvy to gain that many points right now. Pearl, one of the largest cards Savvy uses, does not have any placement on this map now. Suction Bomb, it'll activate one special point, but now being down by 21 points, it is not what you want to see. We have the Splash Wall now, able to generate yet another special point for J Deco while getting more turf points. This match is very quickly starting to snowball. Tenant Tech able to generate two points for Savvy, however she's still just, just so far behind in terms of points. I don't think that any number of special points will be able to save it at this point. J Deco going to play Gluga Duelies, won't be getting a special point from it, no matter its placement, however, it is just more turf just gaining such an incredible lead that to the point where it really isn't feasible to stop it. Instead, going to be playing to gain a special point with the Fizzy Bomb. We see the Pearl special attack being played. It evens out the score momentarily. However, with the six special points compared, that J Deco has compared to the three that Savvy has, I don't think that there's going to be much chance for a comeback here. We see the Splatter Shot special attack. As the score is for the first time in Savvy's favor, however, with only one special point, and with J Deco able to fire off a full 312 in either Booyah Bomb or being able to play Tri Stringer, it's going to be far out of reach for Savvy at this point. With 15. A lead of 15 points here. A splat charger just isn't going to be enough, and that will be the set for real this time. J Deco 3, Savvy 0. As we see that beautiful win streak of 3 beneath J Deco's name. A 3 0 sweep for J Deco.